Welcome back to the course in nuclear medicine physics. Today, we're looking at gamma counters. Now, in the past two lectures, we talked about scintillators and photomultipliers, and how we can combine them together to make a radiation detector. This lecture will focus specifically on different configurations of scintillators and photomultipliers, and how we can use them to detect radiation in a variety of scenarios. We'll look at things like well counters, which are used to measure the radiation of a sample you're going to inject in a patient, and even things like surgical probes, which during surgery, if you inject a patient with a radioactive substance, the surgeon can use to probe and see how much radioactive uptake is in different regions of the body. Anyways, enjoy. I gotta move a bit faster here. Um, so electronics for a gamma camera um, are as follows. And in this uh, follow-up discussion, we're gonna talk about the entire gamma camera, also known as a scintillation, um, also known as a scintillation or anger camera, anger being Hal Anger who invented this kind of a solution to it. But essentially today we've, we, we're really focused on the scintillator part and the PMT part. We're gonna talk about collimators in the future. Don't worry about that. We talked about the need for a high voltage supply for PMTs. And today we're gonna to talk a, a more also about preamplifiers and amplifiers. But as a whole, this is kind of the way it looks like. You've got collimators. We're gonna learn about that later. We talked about detectors just now. We're gonna talk about these later. And that's the essence of a gamma camera and with a lot of data analysis happening here, which we will talk about. Same thing for a PET camera, except a PET camera does not have collimators. Instead, it has a coincidence circuit. We're gonna, we're gonna learn about that. Uh, the, it's the beauty of PET is you don't need a collimator and the coincidence circuit can do the job for you. And that really ends up amplifying the uh, sensitivity a lot because it, the collimators are not killing the input signal. Um, Carlos will in a future lecture talk about well counters for in vitro detection. So this is a, essentially a scintillator and you've dug a hole in it to give very, very high sensitivity and coverage, almost like a four pi coverage uh, of the source. So you can get very, very high sensitivity image uh, detection, not image detection of of the source you're having. But again, the, the essence is very similar. You've got a scintillator followed by PMT, and then you've got downstream uh, processing. Uh, also probes. So often when we th think about nuclear medicine, we think about imaging. But another really great application of, um, of nuclear medicine is in, let's say, surgical procedures. I'm gonna show you a video now. Probes, it's not imaging. It's, it's like you move the probe around to see if there is a signal. And so the essence of it is sort of shown here um, it's very similar as you can see, except you've got, you know, this kind of a simple model and you don't have to, you don't have to do too much data processing because you're not doing imaging. It's just processing what's coming at that angle uh, or at that uh, direction. And so this is just another drawing of it. Um, so again, you're having using, typically using a small, just a, you know, a single essentially detector uh, with, with a small, with a narrow field of view, just looking at the immediate vicinity of what you're looking at. So what are the applications of probes, especially used in surgical procedures? It is an exciting application. Here's an example uh, I'm showing you for melanoma, skin cancer, where you've got, let's say you've got a tumor here, you actually inject a dye and or radioactive substance or both. In the video, you will see they do both to help guidance. Um, and Essentially, so this is sentinel lymph node biopsy, allows you to do sentinel, sentinel lymph node biopsy. So, so the tumor drains itself into lymph nodes, into, and those sentinel lymph nodes are very important for surgical resection and removal and things like that to minimize spread, to understand whether cancer is spreading and also to minimize the spread of cancer in the body. So it's very important. Um, and again, the probe allows you to know where you know, those sentinel lymph nodes are and allows you to guide the surgical resection and take them out. This is the case for melanoma and also for breast cancer, a lot of applications. So similar thing here, you've got the tumor, you inject the dye and the technetium, for example, and you start looking for those lymph nodes and you take them out. So let me show you a video. The video is a little bit, it's two, three minute video. It's a bit graphic. So if you're very sensitive to uh, surgical resection and some of the things that have happens there, just be very careful. You, you may want to not watch. Um, so here we go. 
After the patient is anesthetized, isosulfane blue dye is injected intradermally at the so this site is for melanoma. of the primary melanoma was performed. This dye will track through the lymphatic vessels to the sentinel nodes. After the dye is injected, it can be clearly seen in the skin at the injection site. A handheld scanner with a gamma sensor probe is used to detect focal radio tracer activity from the technetium labeled sulfur colloid that was injected at the primary melanoma site before surgery and that tracks through the lymphatic vessels to the sentinel nodes. The inset shows the screen of the scanner with radio tracer activity shown on the display as counts per second. The counts increase as the scanner moves closer to the sentinel node. The site of highest radio tracer activity is then identified. This is the underarm here. The site of the sentinel nodes, in this case the axilla, is then marked as the site of the planned incision. The handheld gamma scanner can also be used to scan the course of the regional lymphatic vessels in the arm, demonstrating that there are no foci of notable radio tracer activity along the arm distal to the axillary nodes, and therefore no sentinel nodes along the course of the afferent lymphatics. An incision is made at the site that has been marked, and the dissection extends into the subcutaneous tissue. The gamma scanner can be inserted into the incision to help locate the sentinel nodes more precisely. As the dissection extends down to the axillary nodes, the sentinel nodes can be identified because they are stained blue from the isosulfane blue dye. In this example, the sentinel nodes are configured in a chain as a group, which is dissected from the surrounding tissue. The sentinel nodes are commonly harvested individually instead of as a group. The gamma scanner can be used to scan the sentinel nodes, confirming the presence of radio tracer activity. Once the sentinel nodes have been dissected free of the surrounding tissue and removed from the surgical site, they can be scanned with the gamma scanner ex vivo for further confirmation. The individual nodes in the sentinel node group are then separated in preparation for histologic analysis. Each sentinel node can also be examined for the presence of blue dye and scanned to confirm the presence of radio tracer activity. That's a probe, of course. Finally, once the sentinel nodes have been removed from the surgical field, the surgical site itself can be scanned again to show that no further focal radio tracer activity is present, and therefore that presumably no additional sentinel nodes remain. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, so it's quite an exciting uh, and important application and probes are, are um, you know, there's a number of groups that are very active in this area. And the newer probes, again, as you can sort of imagine, for surgical requirements, the probes have to be smile, uh, small and sterile, right? So, so uh, you know, people are switching more and more to, from sodium iodide to, to more effective scintillators, such as BGO and LSO. Um, as um, as you can see here, and again, the, the expense wouldn't be that much because you're looking at a single detector, right? You're not, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a huge system, right? Uh, and also uh, possibly using semiconductor detectors, um, which Carlos already talked about. Um, and they tend to be coupled with, instead of PMTs, increasingly with photodiodes. And again, Carlos will talk about this because these Again, these are more expensive than PMTs, but again, you're looking at a sim simple probe, so it's definitely a worthy investment. And even many PET scanners are now starting to switch to this, uh, to photodiodes and, you know, for example, silicon uh, uh, photomultipliers. Um, even though the cost is more, but you know, there's a clear advantages and the costs are coming down. So uh, anyhow, and also wireless probes are making it simpler to use during uh, surgery. Okay, so let's move to ours, uh, some of the... Before, before you move, I just wanted to bring up, because this example of the probes, mm -hmm. I, we just saw how in this case, you would see radiation using probes. Remember when we talk about sharing cover radiation and that's the other way of doing it, it would be a similar procedure, radioisotope is injected, but instead of having this probe, you would actually see this, this light emission because those particles are moving faster than the speed of light in the patient. So that's the other way, because I remember I talked to you guys about that back then, but this is the perfect example of how is that it's used. Exactly similar to the video that you saw, but instead of having a probe, it's gonna be like a darker room and the physician will be able to see where is it glowing. Still in research, it's not like fully implemented in the clinic, but yeah, it, it also exists yeah. out there. 
Yeah, there's a lot of activity in this, um, in this area. Thank you, Carlos, for that. Using different modalities, nuclear medicine, and also Cherenkov radiation is nuclear medicine, except it's light being generated because of the nuclear phenomena. And also there's a lot of research in this area in, in, in using optical methods. Um, okay, so yeah, it's clearly a, a major frontier in, in, uh, um, in guiding surgeries. Okay, so... Thank you.